Yamaha 3.1 liter OX66 engine. This engine was rebuilt here uh, not quite a year ago and the customer had some oil tank problems and uh, ultimately brought it back and this sensor was bad, actually it broke apart in the tank. Uh, customer story, maybe I misunderstood him, but uh, if he ran the tank empty and ran the motor the first time or I don't know anyway we brought it back about a week ago we replaced this sensor we double checked it the motor was running good uh, the oil pump was pumping it was very simple to test we just pulled this out so the float would drop and we could look inside and we could see this thing delivering oil from the onboard oil tank right there so everything looked good uh, it ran really well uh, he said it had a little rattle at some point in time I'm maybe I'm misunderstanding but uh, when it came in this morning the engine uh, definitely had problems uh, when we removed this spark plug this is the number two cylinder now that's not necessarily the hot cylinder the hot cylinder on these is always going to be the higher cylinder this one right here because it's higher up you know gravity dictates so if it was a water pump or something you know or an overheat issue a lot of times we would you know see the problem in this number one cylinder now I just want to say everything I'm saying here is not the word of God there's going to be some slang there may be maybe I say something that's uh, wrong so I don't need to get beat up by anybody this is just a quick overview of a problem that we're trying to locate um, so we're gonna run a compression test now now we've uh, started to remove this head but we know that this cylinder is burned so we've only removed these bolts um, we were able to go through the spark plug hole because the motor was stuck we just tapped on the piston with an extension carefully while we applied some pressure up here uh, carefully and we got the engine to unstick pretty easily and it rolled over we took an air blower, blew any uh, aluminum debris out of there, and that's it. So we want to run compression. Now this OX66, they don't run a lot of compression. Um, typically, what was this thing? 115. 115. After it was rebuilt, it was about 115 after we ran it in just a, a short amount of time. But we load tested this engine thoroughly in our run tank. We had a tremendous amount of problems with this engine initially and it required a lot of labor and a lot of parts mostly the labor was drilling out broken bolt holes and then diagnosing its failures after we were trying to attempt to run it which one of its failures i believe was the the, the engine control module and the stator now we did replace the fuel pumps this has three fuel pumps and we did i uh, believe i'm not sure if we did the electric fuel pump but we took the vst apart cleaned it we cleaned the injectors that seemed to be functioning uh, we are running the oil pump on this unit. Uh, seemed to be okay. And anyway, it was a lot of work that was done to this thing. It was kind of a basket case, but it ran really well. Uh, so right now, Joseph over here and Kenneth over there, we're going to run a compression test. We're going to we're pretty much assume this one's zero, right? We know it's zero by the damage we see in there. And it's kind of perplexing as to why the number two is only a damaged cylinder. Uh, to me, that indicates potentially... Uh, the brand new fuel pump, uh, you know, is blown, uh, possibly, and, and drawing vacuum into that cylinder, causing a vacuum leak. I don't think so, but it's possible. But it's more possible that maybe the boat has been sitting a little bit, and this fuel injector right here could be having a problem and could be clogged. Uh, we did take a fuel sample. I'm going to look over here, and the fuel doesn't look brand new. Uh, it's a little, little gold-colored, and... You know, yesterday's fuels were gold, today's fuels are clear. So when we see gold fuel, we know it's got a little bit of time on it. But the biggest thing is we don't see any water in it uh, yet. We're letting it sit here, but I don't see any water at all in there, which is a really good sign. Uh, the customer stated that the oil tank on the engine was empty uh, when he checked it. But when we received this, maybe he filled it back up all the way to the top. And I talked to him on the phone and asked him if he had checked that tank, and he said, uh, no. And then uh, maybe he did check it, maybe he didn't check it, but he, he said he did not check that tank. And this tank right now, as we received the boat this morning, just happens to be full to the very, very top. So yeah, either he just filled it up, I, I just don't know. I mean, that, that tank's completely full. This tank is completely full. The, the number two piston is burnt uh, pretty badly. 
and it's definitely going to have to have uh, that cylinder worked on. So we want to make sure, you said it was 115 initially, right? And we wrote that down, and then he's going off his memory, but we also wrote it down. So Joseph here and Kenneth, we're going to run a test on this number one cylinder. Let's see what we got. Ready? Yes. So that's about 112, 115, 110, 112. You know, and that's okay. That's good. Different gauges are going to be, you know, off a little bit here, there, you know. The OX66 doesn't run a lot of compression. Fuel injected motors, you know, they run them pretty lean. Uh, they don't need a lot of pressures. Okay, so now we're on number three cylinder, right? Okay, hit it. it looks about the same. Same. About the same, 110. Now we're going to go to number five cylinder. And a lot of times, and I'm speaking off the cuff here, uh, if the bottom cylinders are burned or damaged or have low compression, uh, that'll indicate the exhaust has been overheating or something like that, you know. And that could be a lean condition or a timing issue or whatever. Uh, so if we see low compression on this cylinder right here, we're gonna suspect maybe something else uh, caused a problem, but at present, taking the spark plugs out, they look great, and only the number two was damaged which indicates just a problem on the number two somewhere. Okay, go ahead. Okay, that's about 110, 111, it's close enough. Yeah. All right. Now, we're not even gonna run a compression here. We know this cylinder is zero. We know it by the, the severe damage to the piston. So we're gonna, we're gonna step down here to what is this? Four. Number four. Okay, let's see what number four looks like. Yes, sir. Wow. Okay. Well, number four looks really good. I mean, even better than the bank that's not suffering. Uh, that's almost 120, right? Okay. Well, that's good news. All right. And this is number six, right? Ready? Yes, sir. That's about one, okay, that's about 108. So we've got this center cylinder kind of high, which might be a little wet in there, but I mean, you know, our fuel pumps are over here. Maybe it's drawn a little fuel off of there. I, I don't know why that one's a little higher. Maybe it's just when they rebuilt it, they did a better job on that hole. I don't know, you know, the ring seated better. Okay, so, I mean, if y'all want to, just for kicks, go ahead and screw the gauge in here. Okay. I mean, we know it's zero, but, and we're missing the head bolts on it, so if it has any pressure, potentially you could just push it up the side of the head gasket. But the rings are shot on the right. top, so we know, yeah. Here we go. Yeah, go ahead. Right. So we know that one's cooked. So this power head's got to be torn down, and that cylinder's got to be taken care of. It's gonna to have to be bored on that cylinder, one new piston and rings. We're gonna need a few gaskets, a power head gasket, but not a lot of parts at all. And that's gonna be a relatively inexpensive repair, except for we don't know why it failed. So what we're about to do uh, when I stop this film is we're gonna do some testing on this fuel injector. We're also gonna be looking at the spark to see if the spark looks good, but we know this spark is gonna be okay. And we're also going to be testing this oil tank um, there's its fuel switch. We're going to test that again, but we're going to test that float to make sure to see if we're pulling oil from that tank. And if we are, then, I mean, the customer, I've got no reason to call the customer a liar. I don't want anybody to get me wrong. He said this tank was empty. Well, if this tank emptied and this motor was running, it certainly would have not just burned the number two piston only and compression and everything would be fine on the others. Even the spark plugs look really, really good on the other cylinders. So we're looking for a nice kind of a brown, rusty burn. The weather is kind of bad out here today. It's a little cloudy, so I apologize about the, the viewing. But we can see that's a nice brown uh, color on these spark plugs, and they all look about the same. So there's no indication. Get a flashlight, please. Here, shine this flashlight on these, on the tips. 
on the end of the spark plug, right? I might, let me try to get my camera to focus. Technical difference. cell phone, yeah. Shine it from the end like this. There you go. So as you can see, those spark plugs all look about the same. Nice, pretty brown color. That's what you want to see. This is for the other side, right? Shine a light on them. This is for the other side, and of course, the, where's the burn spark? Right, I have it in my hand. Okay, right set there. it down there. And there's the bad one, number two cylinder, right? So that's unfortunate. But something caused this number two cylinder, and it's my speculation that it certainly isn't the oil system failing. My phone will not focus on this. I'm sorry. Okay, we've had a chance to do some electrical diagnostics uh, on the Yamaha OX66. We've removed the oil tank to verify that the pump right there is good. Uh, I'm going to be a little bit long on this, okay, but I apologize if I make any errors in my diagnostic statements. So this is a power and ground. Brown is power, blue is ground. If you send power and ground to that, you'll turn that pump on if the pump is working and you'll pump oil out of that hose on the right side which loops around and comes up and that's what goes and feeds your engine oil tank this tank right here via this hose okay so we have verified now there is a little inline filter down here uh, from the suction side that a lot of people say is clogged and they have problems and yeah it could be a problem but man i'll be honest with you i've never seen one clogged now that's not to say that they don't get clogged it's just i haven't seen one clogged uh, this is the tank sensor for this tank, okay, and it goes in that hole right there. Now, I'm guessing that when this thing is down, that's going to let the engine run, and when it, I mean, when it's down, that's going to shut the engine off, and as the float moves up, that's going to trigger the computer to tell it it's completely out of oil, and it's going to shut the engine down or put it in limp mode or something uh, so the engine is not damaged or damaged severely. Had a little camera problem, so we had to just kind of pick up where we left off. So the, the switch, back to the switch over here to manually fill the tank, it's a simple in and out signal. So uh, these wires are not the original wires, but if we jumper those two wires together with the key on or hit the switch, we were just testing that circuit, we can make this pump run over here no problem. And uh, so, so what we've done is we verified that the switch was functioning manually. We verified the wiring to the switch was functioning properly. We've ohmed out the extension cord that runs from the uh, engine to the tank is functioning properly. And we're able to make this pump run perfectly fine with the manual switch. However, it did not want to operate at all with our new float sensor. So now this float sensor is two-party, okay? I'll flip that over, Joseph. So as it's in the tank and you run out of oil, this uh, this is your oil level sensor. And this camera is really blurry. This is your oil level sensor that's going to dictate... I don't know why this camera is so foggy. So, I mean, it's really poorly focusing. That's better. So the upper float is going to trigger the pump on in the tank and the bottom float we're assuming Yamaha's design is when the bottom float drops the world has ended <laughs> and the tank is out of oil and it's going to trigger the alarm circuit okay so the customer said he never got an alarm and we we agree with that at this point now we got a buy we got a ground here because we had that off at the bottom of the cylinder head we started to remove this and that ground is not associated with what we're working on now but we wanted it hooked up um you can move for a second joseph so the computer we also verified the grounds on the computer the computer ground is coming out of where is it at right up in here it's coming out right there where joseph is pointing and it's in a little connector which we verified and it runs over here to an engine ground uh, up in here on top of the the port side cylinder head, that bolt right there is where it's grounded. All the grounds to the computer look good, and the wiring in and the plugs checked out, everything is clean, everything looks good. While we were testing, we decided with the key on, we'd unplug this and it triggered the alarm. And 
so we plugged it back in and we did that i don't know five ten times probably mm -hmm. and then out of one of those times we were kind of talking we weren't really paying attention but when we cycled it that thing started running and it started pumping oil out and i spotted it but i could never replicate it again so and that was with this float in the down position so whatever we did made it work for a second and that pointed us over here to the main control unit the engine computer and it is quite apparent at this point in time that the engine computer is not triggering this sensor system to turn that pump on and that seems to be where the system lies so well, i just want to show what happens uh is the key on right now it is on Go ahead and unplug that and we can verify the alarm circuit's working. When that's disconnected and the alarm comes on, the audible alarm. Now, the weird part is, is when you plug it back in, the alarm doesn't go back off, right? And it'll, it'll sit there and alarm for like, I don't know, a minute, two minutes maybe, and it'll shut back off. And then once we unplug it again, it'll reestablish its alarm, which indicates. Now, that, that you say, well, the sensors are down. Flip it over, Joseph. Let's see if the alarm turns off. And the alarm did not turn off. So we know that we have verified this switch with an ohm meter in the plug and its powers and grounds is functioning. Now there goes the alarm. Now flip it back over. The alarm shut off. And we should be triggering the alarm immediately right now. But it's not triggering. We're having to trick the computer to make it do that. Unplug it again. And the alarm sets. That's because the circuit breaks. So that simulates this. So you say, well, if it's coming on with that, then maybe it's this sensor that's not working. <clears throat> plug it back in. Now, once we plug that back in and we do that, after about a minute, it does turn off by itself, but it's still never triggering this pump to run. Now, just to prove that our switch is working, Joseph's gonna touch those wires just briefly and you'll see, it's, and it's very, very quick. See the alarm turned off by itself. See, just very quickly, and I mean, just bump it. I mean, it's a very quick pump. So, uh, we're getting that guy's boat all dirty. So, we know the pump is functioning like it should. We know the wiring, the extension cord, all of that is good. Uh, we cannot, we've confirmed the, the ohms reading in the new sensor is functioning. We've confirmed that uh, very intermittently the pump is working. We just replaced that sensor uh, about a week ago. And when they plugged it in, it was working. Uh, so that's an intermittent problem. And that intermittent problem at present is controlled by this computer. Now, I don't know what that computer costs, but I'm going to bet it's a freaking grand or better from Yamaha. And I got to say, I don't think it's worth replacing it. Everything else on this motor seems to work fine. The engine seemed to have, uh, customer stated it was running fine and so forth. So uh, in my opinion, it should just be pre-mixed and we should just do away. We should just block off the oil pump. But Yamaha is oil and injecting into the cylinders, into the cylinder walls, through this pump and everything else. So, kind of screws you. You gotta make a decision. You gotta say, okay, well, we need to go in there and replace that one piston. That's a lot of work and a little money, uh, mostly work. And then we're gonna put it back together. Are we gonna buy a new computer? and plug it in or are we going to premix? That is the question and that decision will be up to the customer. Uh, my advice is a new computer and premix. <laughs> you know, uh, or put some oil in the gas and run the oil system. I mean, you're going to carbon jack the rings pretty quick, but you'll have to decarbon the motor, you know, uh, depending on how much you run it pretty regularly. Um, you're going to foul spark plugs. I mean, there's just not a in my opinion right now, just off the cuff, I don't have a really good scenario for how to avoid a future failure on that. And this engine came in originally needing rebuilt. Uh, this boat was equipped with a different type of motor. And this came in as a basket case and all the pistons were burned. Up. So I'm assuming that now I'm assuming that that was an ongoing issue with that computer and uh, it wasn't caught or wasn't identifiable, you know, uh, after the rebuild.